Merry Christmas, sledheads. Today, I'm going to show you how to change a recoil rope. All right, so I've got Dennis's recoil here, and functionally it's still good, but the rope looks like garbage. Let's see if this will focus in on it. It's all embedded with plastic from the recoil guides. Maybe you can see it on the loop there. Um, I don't know what's going on, but the, the plastic recoil guides you get now are all garbage plastic. They wear right out and get stuck to the cord. There's some places selling aluminum ones on eBay. I'm going to recommend you get the aluminum recoil guides so you don't have this problem. Um, anyways, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, change out the rope on Dennis's recoil here and take you along for the ride. All right, let me show you the tools I use when I'm doing this. So I always keep a needle nose handy in case I got to grab the rope. I cut the rope with a good, you know, dykes. Um, the dental pick helps a lot if I got to grab it, pull it through, poke it. A um, little torch to burn the ends of the rope. And uh, I got a vice grip that I'll use to hold the pulley from rotating on me. And then the rope I use is like a five millimeter uh, nylon rope. So a little smaller than a quarter inch. It's actually intended to be a starter rope. Uh, you can get it a lot of places. I like this nice, soft, flexible rope. This is like what Polaris used uh, uh, as original equipment. And I recommend this over the more harder ropes with the often have like a blue speckle in them. Um, I find that those kind of fight you on the rewind. They're so stiff. They don't wind up as good sometimes. Now, every rope's different. Maybe you got some blue speckled rope that works great for you. That's awesome. I just, this is just what I found. So, assuming you're starting with a recoil with, uh, the rope still in it, the first thing I do is pull the rope all the way out to the end. So you can see the knot is right at the, uh, and I'm fumbling a little. This is a lot easier with two people. But I've got the knot right there at, at the entrance. And then I'll uh, clamp it lightly. And I do mean lightly because you don't want to break that pulley. But clamp the pulley. And then I just cut the rope and get it out of there. there's that now could have probably had the new rope prepared i use about seven feet typically so i find seven feet about the right length people ask me that a lot well how much should i use well eight's too much and uh six is a little short not six is probably workable for most people and i'll maybe go a little over a little past my seven feet you know maybe i'll go closer to eight sometimes because you can always cut the excess off and the rope's not very expensive. So as soon as you cut your rope, um, melt the ends. And when you melt the ends, if you got to wear gloves, wear gloves, but crunch it down and make it nice and tight. Don't leave that a big uh, ballooned out mushroom end on there. And in fact, I cut it square this time, but I usually angle cut it. So I'm going to come back and uh, put an angle cut on that end I just cut off. And that helps me get it through. That just helps it get through. Oh, well, I did an angle cut on the opposite end, I guess. But I'll show you. This must be the end I just cut. So, just give it an angle cut. And then when you melt it, you can shape it into a, into a really nice point. And that's going to help you a lot. Because your next task is to feed the rope backwards and get it into that into the hole hopefully you could see this let me check i think you could see that so i've got the rope going back in and now to get it up through the hole what i usually do is poke the dentist pick into it which is 
easier said than done sometimes. All right, that's really close, but there it goes. So see it pop through there? Now we're home free. So that was the challenge to jam the pick in the end there. Um, make sure when you tie your tail, you know, you leave at least an inch of a flap in there. Won't hurt anything, and that way if the knot rolls a little bit in use, it won't come unknotted. All right. Pull that down in. All right, so there I've let go all the tension. And I'd like to tell you I did that on purpose, but I didn't. Um, but it's good because I can do, do a little demo here. So I'll get the end of the rope back out. You can see it's no big deal if that happens to you. All right, but you can see there's hardly any tension on the rope. So I'm just going to tie a big old, big old loop that I can easily undo later up here, just so I don't drop it through again. And, you know, it, it is sucking in all the way, but this notch, so there's a notch right here. That notch is so that you can wind it up uh, tighter if you need to. So, all I'm going to do is... Get the rope through that notch, which you can see I did, and then I'm going to use that to walk the pulley around one more turn. You don't want to go too crazy on the tension. You can break the spring, but that's much better with that one extra turn. And then pull it all the way out, and the tension's about even. So, there you go. So Merry Christmas, sledheads. Um, hopefully you see now, recoil ropes are easy, uh, especially when you're just changing it and the spring's not broke. Um, if the spring's broke, I'll, I'll have to show a, a whole rebuild where I replace the spring at some point in the future. But uh, even if your rope's broke, well, now I've shown you how to wind more tension on. So as long as your spring didn't come unhooked or break, it's the same process. You're just going to do more winds until you get the tension right. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and please be sure to subscribe to the channel, and once again, Merry Christmas!